G'day and welcome to Prop Maker. This is the channel that helps you make stuff, restore stuff, and repair stuff. And today we show you something very rare indeed. Prop Maker actually completing a project. Roll a thing. So yes, I've actually completed a project. So the original intention for buying a fishtails machine, which I did when I, and I actually bought it not running, not in a running state, it was completely just not working. It was firing up a little bit, but when I first bought it, it came up with errors on the screen from the moment I actually paid money for it. So it was a bit of a journey and every time I actually thought that I'd actually completed the project another thing happened and I was put back a couple of steps and I actually had to go back and uh, rethink or actually get stuck into fixing that new problem and uh, that just basically stalled it. So what was the original plan was to actually buy um, this fishtails even though I was, uh, actually do love the game um, it's actually pretty pretty spectacular when it's actually in full flight um, it's just though I have a plan to actually keep you know, basically buying and restoring pinball machines um, so that I can make enough money to actually buy my dream pinball machine which is a Star Trek next generation um, and the other dream is actually a, maybe a Doctor Who one as well <laughs> I like that one as well so um, the idea is uh, to you know get this, get in, fix it up quickly. <laughs> anyway, fix it up quickly, and and basically flip it and uh, see if I can actually afford um, or contribute to the goal of getting a Star Trek pinball machine. So, what was the journey like? Now, there are smaller videos that are going to be coming out when I cut them together. Just a, such a journey uh, that, that I was having. I um, was, you know, things were just sort of cropping up so fast. I was filming everything, but I just wasn't cutting everything together. So I've actually got to go back. And also during that time, I was actually helping Russell out at South Australian uh, Pinball and Arcade on his Tales of the Crypt and then his Dracula. So um, that sort of got a little bit in the way of getting some stuff done around here. So I just didn't get these videos cut. So there will be some smaller videos coming out on this for some details, but um, for now, I'm just gonna give a quick summary of what actually happened. So when I first got this machine, as you know, it wasn't running and I will cut to some B-roll um, you know, of these particular things as I breeze over them very quickly, but First thing that I had was on the screen, I had an error about fuse 115 and fuse 116, I think. Uh, no, 114. Um, and basically what ended up happening is I had to open up the machine and we located the problem in our power driver board. And the power driver board had an issue and it could have been a number of things, but when we finally diagnosed, well, I ripped out the board and started poking around with a multimeter measuring things, I finally uh, started um, replace, replacing things that just weren't working. So there was definitely a capacitor not working and uh, a little power rectifier that wasn't working. Um, so I had to figure out why they weren't working as well and what actually caused the problem. So what actually the problem was, um, was, well, or sorry, initial, let's backtrack a little bit. These two little components not working stopped my entire 12 volt rail from actually functioning. So a lot of things weren't working. It was uh, pretty, pretty much, you know, sort of stalled it from actually being able to play anything on the, uh, on the game or even getting past those error screens. So after I discovered that it was a, a small capacitor and a little tiny uh, power, uh, power, um, I think it's called um, regulator. Regulator. 
When I replaced those, I actually inspected the back of the board and realised that there was some corrosion at the back of the board and I actually had to repair that first. Um, the corrosion happens when a capacitor is so old that it starts leaking. And the stuff that's inside a capacitor, um, when it leaks out, is very corrosive to a circuit board, which is not good. Um, so after fixing and repairing the circuit board, with a jumper wire and um, some solder on tracks and things like that. I then replaced those two components and that got me past that part. So we were sort of up and running, except then um, I was having a problem with my soundboard and the soundboard was reporting um, all sorts of problems and I ended up um, going out to Sapper and, and uh, taking my boards with me and putting basically my chips into their, uh, their fishtails um, one by one and trying to diagnose that way exactly what was the problem. Um, we thought it was going to be all sorts of uh, issues. When you read forums up on Pinside, as much as I love that site, um, and Russell <laughs> pointed this out to me is that, yeah, I can read all of these answers that people post and generally one of them will be right, but there's hundreds of answers, hundreds of people posting solutions. So I was sort of reading something one night and then I was asking Russell, yeah, is this going to fix that? He's like, well, it could, but it's probably most likely this simple thing over here. Generally, bet your bottom dollar, bo bet your bottom dollar, Russell was generally right. So uh, happy with that and kudos Russell. But um, yeah, so what actually ended up being was uh, we eventually, well I eventually found that there was one t uh, integrated circuit at the very top of the board which basically didn't function and when I replaced it, it was a Yamaha chip of some sort. I'll put a po post a picture on the screen right now. Um, and that, that particular chip, once I replaced it, um, it was soldered directly to the board. And thanks to Russell's friend Wayne, he told me how to desolder a, very, you know, a large chip like that by snipping all the legs first, just chop the thing out of the board and then take the individual legs out. Nice tip, really, really handy because when I was doing something on a practice board, they, those long chips were really hard to get out and one clump if you wanted to try and save them. But as Wayne was pointing out, they're just, they're a $2 item or whatever. Uh, they're pretty cheap. So just snip the legs off, get rid of the old one, put in a new one. Um, but instead of just putting one, a new one straight onto the board, put put a socket in there so they can just, if ever it happens again, you pull that, that uh, IC out of that socket and replace it into, um, into the socket. So it's a much easier job without any soldering after that. So after I figured that one out and we got the soundboard actually going and it was all fine, it was time to actually strip the play field and I, I did that. I stripped the play field right back um, and em emptied of it all, of all of this gadgetry and the wire forms and all of that. Once I'd got all of that off, I uh, gave it a good wax, uh, or sorry, a good clean with basically shellite, which is uh, people in America use naphtha. Um, they don't call it naphtha here in Australia, they call it shellite, which is uh, interesting anyway. Lighter fluid, basically. So just a cloth and lighter fluid that just ran over the entire surface of the play field um, and basically cleaned as much as I could and then waxed it with, uh, is it canuba? Wax. Okay. I will correct myself if on screen um, and so the entire flat surface was actually clean when I put things back on uh, I cleaned them as I go as I went and the plastics that were broken along here I replaced um, including these two guys down the front here all of these ones at the side and one on the top of the boat so there's a lot of plastics that were actually replaced. Um, the next thing I replaced was uh, one of these targets down down here were actually um, the incorrect 
size and it actually caused some damage because a ball got in behind there and smashed the globe uh, leaving the base of that globe just live and in the pin and in the actual um, game so once I replaced that um, just ordered the these parts from Marco specialties and other places RTBB over over in Melbourne and pinball spare parts I ordered some stuff um, as well as raiding uh, the bins out at, at Sapper um, and I got pretty much everything clean and tidy back on the play field so then what did I do next I reworked these flippers the flippers that were in here were actually the flippers that were from a different game so they were longer flippers and they weren't actually the same color so someone along the way had replaced it with a second hand one or one of them at least with a second hand one um, and it was actually a different color than the other so interesting but uh, so replaced them back with the original lightning uh, flippers they're called they're about an eighth of an inch shorter than these longer flippers so the game's actually harder but I actually wanted this game to be back as it sort of was back then in 90 uh, in 92 93 when it was made so these flippers are now um, the ones that came with it now I'm not a, a complete snob I only do that because that's the way that actually affects gameplay and um, but there are other things that I did do that, that actually did modify this game. So the one thing that I did was I changed the colour of those pop bumpers up the back. They actually came red. Um, so did the lanes behind them. And if you notice now, they're actually blue. And same with the lanes, two of them are blue and the two outside ones are green that match the plastics that they're next to. So um, the reason why I changed them to blue is because that that end of the play field, if you look at the artwork as a whole, that's water. It's supposed to be water. And I don't really understand why they were red. Maybe it's just because the factory had a surplus of red pop bumpers and they needed to get rid of them and they put them on this machine back that year. Not sure. But I think it looks better blue. And, you know, generally, um, whoever buys this will actually... I'll also uh, end up throwing into a box all these bits that were the, on the original machine back into a box so if ever they get, uh, want to restore it to the way it was actually at purchase, they can. The other modification I did to this machine and that is that colour DMD display. So the colour DMD display, at great expense I put it in there because I wanted this fishtails to stand out against all the other uh, pinballs that were out there uh, that might be for sale at the time uh, uh, the time this goes up on uh, you know onto um, the markets and I wanted this to sort of stand out and having a color uh, display just lifts it and for a few hundred dollars I just think it's magic so and when I get my Star Trek TNG uh, pinball eventually I'm going to be doing that to it as well. Make it so. So I definitely want that colour display in the in the Star Trek one. Um, after all that was done and actually got the game working, um, I then turned my attention to the fish. The fish actually is supposed to flap um, during the game when you hit uh, some of these, this centre ball, captive ball in the middle, and it hits at the top, it will rock the boat. Basically the fish will start flapping um, and there's other ways of triggering that fish, but the fish's tail actually moves. It's quite loud. Um, tip for those playing at home, you never have to, like I keep hearing horror stories of people snipping the wires at the back just to shut it up. Um, just behind that back glass, there's a little plug. You just unplug it and the fish doesn't work at that point, but it still lights up and everything. So never snip wires on a pinball machine when you don't know what you're freaking doing. I mean, if you knew what you're freaking doing, then you would have known there's a plug in the back. Anyway, someone had done that to the back of this one. So I ended up replacing the uh, coil because the coil had actually been damaged by someone doing that. And also, um, the other thing that I did on the back of the coil, and I'll put some pictures up if I've got them, 
I actually put some dampeners on there so that the fish actually still moves, but the actual noise isn't a clackety clack, it's a more of a thumpity thump, um, which is more fish like anyway. But that was done just using some of these uh, rubbers that you normally use on a play field, and I put them on the actual back of the coil. Um, so that just dampens the sound a bit. That fish is also damaged at the back uh, of it, and I repaired that with. Um, so it's torn on the back of this rubber fish and so I went to Clark Rubber looking actually for some sort of uh, way of gluing it back together um, but then I came up with a better idea which was using a double-sided suction cap and just basically jamming it into the tear um, so the tear doesn't actually get touched anymore by the by the the coil uh, the coil um, thumper basically hitting it so now it just hits that suction cup and it should actually sort of protect the fish and um, yeah I think it's a lot quieter and it's actually still very effective um, then I thought I was all done and dusted and ready to go ready to put it up on on the uh, on, on the market but then this particular flipper started to have a bit of an issue and just the, the right hand one, uh, where it would just not hold a ball up. So luckily I had the correct coil in my bag of tricks and I just replaced that today and now it's back to working exactly the way it should. Um, the other thing that happened was this reel, the, there's like a fishing reel in the game here and it captures balls uh, into the reel and then you eventually capture three and it goes into multi-ball. So what actually happened was it just stopped and um, it stopped ejecting the balls for, at the start and the second thing that it did then was it wasn't actually stopping where the hole was matching up where with this wire form the ball comes traveling down here and lands inside a hole inside the reel. Um, just down here and the ball comes flying down here and then lands in that hole. Now the way it actually corrects, correctly gets into that hole or lines up at the start of a game is using a thing called an opto. And if you, um, if you look carefully here, there's little teeth on the out edges of the, the reel there and that tells the machine exactly where it is as far as where it is uh, spun around. So that it can always line up that hole. So for some reason, my reel uh, just wasn't lining up and then it stopped working altogether. And I was really worried because those motors that actually run those things are actually hugely expensive. They're like $300. So first thing I did was I checked that the motor was actually working. I just put some 12 volt power to it and it actually went. So I knew it wasn't the motor. Um, I replaced the cord, um, the, sorry, the, the rubber band that actually drives it. Um, I replaced it with one from RTBB, which was, it's actually clear, so it actually looks like fishing, fishing line. Um, so, that's a map! That's pretty cool, talks. <coughs> so that was actually pretty good, um, but it still wasn't working or functioning correctly. So I ended up having to replace um, this little thing. So this is the thing that drives that motor um, and mine, this is actually a, a good one as well, this one actually works, but mine, or, or the one that was in there, um, it somehow had a corrosion issue on the back of it and I don't understand how it can have that corrosion but there's no capacitors or anything there that actually can leak so it just must have been damaged at some point. And I don't know um, how. Anyway, after replacing it, that reel just went back to absolute normal. It was fine. So now everything is actually complete and working and functioning. And I've just put the glass back on it. And that's when I started this video. So stay tuned for more videos and like and subscribe with these, you know, these sorts of videos because more the merrier and the more you, you know, subscribe or share it to someone 
helps me out hugely. <coughs> With this though, I am keeping an eye out. We are, this is today's my actual birthday, 6th of March. If you're in Australia and you're after a fishtails machine, this is probably going up on the markets, probably on Facebook to start with, um, but most likely it'll land uh, on the Oz Pinball uh, sale sites on Facebook. So if you're after one, either contact me through PropMaker at propmaker.com.au um, or um, yeah, just, just drop a line or a comment and see if it's still available. Um, yeah, not sure exactly what I'm going to price this at because there was a lot of work that went into this. Um, anyway, we shall see you next time. You've been watching Prop Maker. Roll the thing. <laughs>